Bonding between two textures is something that we just take for granted when working with the terrain tools in Unity. In this video, you're going to learn how to make a shader that will allow you to blend between textures in a very similar fashion by painting on meshes with vertex colors. Hey, Chris here from Alm Academy, here to help you. <laughs> yes, you! Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you learn shader magic. Make sure you stick around to the end. I've got an exciting announcement I'll tell you about at the end of the video. This year, I've been spending a lot of time with Shader Graph. Back in 2015, I was very afraid of shaders. I thought they were some dark art. And when I saw this effect, I was like, wow, how did they do that? And turns out it's actually pretty easy once you kind of know the basics. So what we'll do is just start with two albedo textures. And based on the vertex colors that we paint onto a mesh, remember vertex colors are stored per vertex on a mesh, we will blend based on the red channel between one texture and another. Based on how red the vertex color is at that particular point, we'll blend between the base and then the red texture. Now, keep in mind, because we are using vertex colors, we need to have higher poly meshes than maybe we would typically want because you store the vertex colors per vertex. And if we want to have really detailed level blending, we need more vertices. We're going to be using two free Unity packages today that you can get from the package manager. One is called Pro Builder. I use it all the time. And the other is called Poly Brush, which allows us to paint vertex colors in the editor using a brush. So it's more like the terrain tools that we're familiar with using. These are available on all modern versions of Unity. I'm using Unity 2022 LTS in this particular video. Let's get started. I pulled some textures off Open Game Art, some clovers, some grass, and then a bunch of different brick type materials dirt, concrete, and this kind of stuff, most of them are seamless. That gives us a foundation to play with to be able to blend different textures together. Since these are licensed in the CC0, we can use them and include them in the repository. So first thing we might do is make some materials. Let's make one material for the ground and one that's going to be a brick material for these walls and cubes. For the ground, if we just throw that on the ground and give it the grass, we get a grass texture. And for the brick, if we assign a base map of, I don't know, this brick one, we can see they show up on the material. They're kind of small, so we might end up adjusting the tiling. A common need that we have with like brick walls or even the ground is we want to blend between different textures. Like maybe our brick wall is a damaged brick wall and we want it to go between this and this one where this is like the damaged texture. Right now, we can't do that. We'd have to have different materials and maybe different sub meshes to apply that, or we'd have to just manually blend them together in an image editing program. And then that damage would tile as well. In ProBuilder, we can apply vertex colors to an object and by default, they're all white. If we go ahead and reset this back to the default ProBuilder material and go vertex colors, the ProBuilder material blends in the vertex color so you can see what it is. So we set to full white, it's there. This is pink, blue, etc. And with polybrush, which by the way, you can go to tools, polybrush, polybrush window to get this open. I just docked it to the bottom. The middle icon allows us to paint vertex colors onto a mesh. So if we set up a color mask of red, we can see it'll let us paint some red vertex colors onto that object. It's very important to note that because we're painting with vertex colors, that this data is stored per vertex, which means we need a much higher poly mesh to get a good blending. For example, this building would really only be a few polygons typically, but because we want to apply vertex colors, I've subdivided the object a bunch of times. So we have more vertices to apply those vertex colors to. ProBuilder will let you do this with the subdivide object option, as long as you're using a ProBuilder mesh. The way painting works with polybrush is based on our brush size. It'll interpolate from that center inner circle and go out to the outer circle where it eventually goes back to whatever color was there. This gives us a nice linear interpolation between our color and whatever other color is there. And you can see how they kind of come together as we try to paint in different areas. So we can imagine wherever we paint, for example, red, we'd want to show a different texture. So the base texture might be the brick. And then wherever we have red, we'd want to show that damaged texture. That gives us a lot of flexibility to dynamically set up where we want to see damage. And we can even set it at runtime. Let's go ahead and make a shader. I put this into a shaders folder, right click, create shader graph. I'm using URP with shader. I'll we'll make that called vertex color texture blend. If we just double click on that, it'll open up shader graph and double clicking on the top maximizes it. On the left, our blackboard shows up. If you don't have that, you can click the blackboard button at the top right. This is where we add all the inputs to our shader. So we can do plus. We obviously need two sets of textures, a base map and a secondary map. 
And then maybe we'll also, for fun, add a smoothness float. If we open up the graph inspector, that button at the top right, we can set default values. So smoothness, maybe we default it to 0.5 and make it be a slider from zero to one because we don't want to go over that. On both of these texture maps, it'd be useful to be able to control the tiling. So there's an option to say use tiling and offset. And that sets up in the inspector where for each texture, you can independently control the tiling and offset. We'll turn that on for both of these textures, bring in the base map. And to use that tiling and offset, we drag that out to a split texture transform in, which gives you then the tiling offset in texture. So the texture can go to a sample texture 2D. That's how we read the texture data. Tiling and offset can go to a tiling and offset, tiling and offset. And then that can go into the UV of the sample texture 2D, so then we'll accurately display the texture based on that tiling and offset value. Normally we just take this to the base color and we're done, but we need to bring in that secondary map and somehow control how do we know whether to show the base map or the secondary map. So we can just repeat what we just did for the secondary map. I'm just gonna select all the nodes and copy paste them. And anytime we want to go between two different values in a linear fashion, we use the lerp node. Let's take that base map to a lerp. The secondary map output to lerp B. Now here's where those vertex colors come into play. If we just add a vertex color node, that's input geometry vertex color. This tells us per vertex what's available. So we can take that output, split that and take only the red channel to the time. So the more red this is, the more of the secondary map we're going to show. The less red it is, the more of the base map we're going to show. So this is only going to work for two textures, but you also have the green, blue, and alpha channels that you could add in more textures. So you can learn between all kinds of different ones and you just define the priority order of should red take precedence, green, blue, or alpha. So we take this output to the base color. Don't forget to add in the smoothness. We save this asset, hop back to our scene view, and let's go ahead and update our materials to use this new shader. On the brick wall and the ground, we can select both of those and change the shader to shader graphs, vertex color, texture blend. What's going on? Everything's showing up as white. Well, Pro Builder by default has all of the vertex colors set to white. So for this bottom plane, which again, you can see is a relatively high poly plane because Pro Builder shows you all of the vertices already. You can also use this globe at the top right and change to shaded wireframe to see all of the triangles. But if we set the vertex colors to black using the vertex colors panel of Pro Builder, now we can see the grass again. And that's just because the vertex colors of being white have fully applied red, green, blue, and alpha channels. So we had fully red, so we were showing the second map that is not yet set up. So we select all of our objects and apply a black color. Let's bring that brick wall back here. Let's change the base map back to the brick wall and set the secondary map to this IMGP5525. And maybe we'll update the tiling to be 0.25. Probably a little bit bigger than they should be, but maybe 0.33 looks a little bit nicer. Now using Polybrush, if we select that paint vertex colors on meshes with a red mask, as we bring this onto the mesh, we can see it's going to paint in and blend in that secondary map. So maybe we shrink that a little bit. We can start painting on some damage, which helps break up the tiling of this texture. And there's already some kind of mortar that comes through a lot on this texture. So we can paint around some of that to give us a more natural look. Pretty awesome, right? This is a really easy effect to apply, but gives our world a lot more dynamism. It makes our world a lot more dynamic. That's pretty cool, huh? You can even take it a step further to lerp between the different textures of other PBR texture things like the roughness, normal emission to get the full PBR effect blending between these. We only did the albedo texture here, but you can follow the exact same process for any other maps that you want to use. I've also got some really awesome news. I've partnered with Game Dev TV to release a shader graph course where you can learn a whole bunch of really awesome effects like how to do things like wind, snow, moss, fire without a texture, smoke, and some other effects as well. It's coming out pretty soon, so stay tuned. I'm really excited about it. I spent a lot of time walking through step by step how to make all these different effects where you can learn not just how to do these things, but how do these nodes work and why do you put them together this particular way? If you've been getting value out of this channel, that'd be a great way to support the channel. Other ways that you can support the channel are to like and subscribe.
You can click through the asset store links or the Humble Bundle links. That gives me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional cost to you and really helps me out. You can also go to patreon.com slash academy, become a supporter, or just click join or super thanks right here on YouTube. At the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the awesome tier, there's Autumn K, Ivan, Rulin, Iphiobolus, Solar Int, and Perry. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.